Hello, I'm Bill Griffith, and today I'm going to talk about BlueWorks Live. <clears throat> you may have seen my previous uh, video here, Introduction to Automation Platform for Digital Business, uh, where I gave an overview of the larger portfolio. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to drill in to the BlueWorks uh, Live uh, modeling capability uh, of the portfolio. <clears throat> and modeling the business processes is about graphically depicting you know, how the process flows between people uh, and systems uh, over time, uh, sometimes weeks, months, uh, even years in some cases. Uh, this is often the first step um, in process innovation. It uh, kind of allows us to get a big picture view uh, of the process across departments, uh, sometimes uh, across even external suppliers from doing things like order to cash. And so here you recall from my video, you know, this is a process that I did for pizza ordering, uh, the, the phases and, and the participants that are involved. And uh, as you see up here, I did this in BlueWorks Live. And BlueWorks Live is uh, IBM's online cloud product. Uh, it's fully managed by IBM. It's offered in a subscription-based uh, uh, pricing model, uh, paid by the user. Uh, it uses BPMN, which is Business Process Modeling Notation. Uh, that's an industry standard uh, for how this picture is drawn and what these boxes and arrows and diamonds and, and whatnot, what they mean. Uh, you can kind of think of it as an improved uh, flowchart uh, format. So as you see in this diagram, um, you know, kind of all the different steps into participants. And, and BlueWorks Live is really my preferred choice for uh, capturing the process and the, and the uh, requirements uh, for this because I can sit down with business users and, and graphically uh, model this out, map it out, and capture the requirements before I jump into the uh, coding tools of BPM or ODM, DataCap, etc. So with that, let's jump over to BlueWorks Live. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to... Type in blueworkslive.com. And you see there's a, a free trial here. And you can uh, you know enter your stuff, start free trial. Uh, I already have a uh, account, so I'm just going to log in. And you see there's a video here, process under 10 minutes, tutorial. I've already done this, so I'm just going to close it. OK, so here's a. Getting started, I'm just going to skip that and jump over to the library, which is where I can organize my processes, decisions, policies, glossaries, things like that. And I'm going to create a new space by clicking this Create New Space. And so spaces are um, a, a way to group my process modeling artifacts together you know, into a project uh, where you can lock down which members of your team you know, have access to this space. Uh, it's really helpful when you have lots of projects going on concurrently. Uh, you might have, you know, spaces for department names or a project name. You can you can even make these hierarchical. So let, let's name this first uh, space. Let's call it uh, Pizza Processes. Pizza Processes. And you'll see that I can actually nest it inside of other spaces so I can get, you know, kind of a hierarchy uh, of organization. Okay, so let's make this a little bit larger, uh, move it over maybe <clears throat> here. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a process blueprint. And this is the name of my process. Uh, and let's just call it um, Bill's Pizzeria Ordering Process. And then I click Create. And so it starts me uh, automatically in the discovery map. You see that right here. I have different ways of looking at it, but it starts me in the discovery map. And I, I like the discovery map uh, as a first step because I can kind of type in really quickly the outline format. And, and this is handy when I'm working with business users because I can just kind of ask them, okay, so what's the first step of the process? And then my favorite question with requirements gathering and process discovery is, and then what happens? I like to say that a lot because uh, you know that's that's how you uncover the process, uh, and a lot of times you got to pull in other people. You know, a business person may say, and then I enter the system into SAP and then hit submit, and then I will say, so then what happens? And they'll say, I don't know, and uh, I think that Susie picks it up next. Okay, well let's go talk to Susie, and so we go talk to Susie, and Susie says, okay, then I log into SAP and I see that the purchase order is here, and then I do this. And so through that discovery process, I really kind of figure out uh, what the process model is. Now, the nice thing 
with the discovery map outline is that I can rearrange things. So, so my first step is really just to type it, kind of a stream of consciousness uh, approach, and then and then later edit it and, and clean it up. So instead of doing that, since I don't have a, a, a business person here to talk with, I'm going to take my picture here. Let's shrink this over, move this around so I can look at it as my uh, as my requirements. So let me pull this over here. And so you see the first step is market pizza. So I'm going to click here and rename this uh, market pizza. And this is where, you know, someone in sales and marketing would figure out the price of the pizza. And so if you recall from my YouTube video, ODM on cloud built from scratch, this is where I specify the pizza types and the price. <clears throat> and so that's really what this, uh, this first uh, milestone is here, market the pizza. And then we'll sell the pizza and post sales what happens support after the pizza has been sold. So I did market pizza and now I hit enter and it creates a new milestone and this is going to be sell pizza and then I hit enter and then the new milestone is post sales and then I hit enter and then I can delete, you know, right click delete and do the other one that I don't want, delete. And so now I've got these uh, milestones. And so inside of the milestones I have the activities. And you can think of these as uh, not like somebody ends a, hits an enter key or something. An activity normally is a person sitting down and completing a chunk of work uh, before they hand it off to another system or another person. So, you know, you could think of like filling out a sales order. There might be 10 fields that you fill in. Uh, and then once you're complete with that, you hit enter and then it passes on to the next person. So th that's really kind of what these activities are, that kind of granularity of a person doing a complete unit of work. So this first one, I'm just going to call this um, price the pizza. And then I'm going to go here and hit enter. And you see it did a milestone, but I want an activity. So I hit the tab key and that indents it, uh, makes it an activity. And I'm going to call this place order, hit enter, and do cook pizza. Okay, so I have my steps. Uh, and if I look over here at my diagram, I see that the these last two should really be moved to post sales. So I'm just going to click it and move it down and that moved it to the right place. Okay, so this really has all the key activities, but now what I want to do is specify who does what. And so if I right click this, I can do edit details and this little dialogue window pops up and I can specify the participant who actually owns it, the experts that someone could reach out to, due dates, cost, inputs, outputs, all that type of stuff, risk, uh, problems that this is solving, policies, so I could attach things like GDPR requirements or HIPAA or PII, uh, whatnot, comments, so you can socialize, kind of tell what's going on, and, and over time this becomes really handy. And then my favorite is this catch-all description, and I'll type in stuff like, you know, met with uh, Susie today, and she said blah, 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 right? And so this is my catch-all, and then I later go back and massage. When I'm trying to do this with a customer, I want to go really quickly and uh, and make this uh, capture as much as I can in a short amount of time, try to get in and out in an hour, uh, and then come back later once I've had time to kind of analyze this information and, and what they were saying, and then go back and clarification. So the first step is uh, who's going to do this? And if I look over here, it is the marketing department. So I'm going to type that in here marketing, which actually has been used before, and I'm going to click here. Now I'm going to go to this one and I'm hitting, uh, what is it? It's uh, control D. So control D and this is going to be the customer. Hit enter and close it. Now I'm going to go here and do the cook is going to cook the pizza. And the cook could be a person or more likely it's actually a, um, a team of people. So here I'm doing Control D, and this is going to be the delivery drivers. And so finally, this last one, I use system, which means, you know, it's not a person. It's a system. You actually see these little icons here uh, that tell me that, too. I'll show you how to do that in a second. All right, so now these are all done. And I've entered uh, the information about the activities and who does what. And then what I didn't do, but I often will do when I'm sitting down with a customer, if I if I know, is I like to put the uh, how long this takes and what it costs. 
And this is really helpful because then I can do analysis to say total up, you know, this analyze button up here allows me to kind of analyze the process uh, and the time. And then I can decide how much it takes for this process, how often it runs. Uh, and start to build out a return on investment uh, study. Okay, so now our next step is to uh, organize this flow uh, into a diagram. So the nice thing with BlueWorks Live is I just click Process Diagram. And it says, would I like to create it? I say, yes, I would. And voila, magically it organized the diagram just from the roles and responsibilities and the activities. This, this is always like magic to me. I always think this is pretty cool. Uh, and now you see that the diagram is a little bit off. I need to put in some activity flows and some, I mean, some decision gateways and, and whatnot. And then maybe color these and do some icons to represent it's a system task or a person task, et cetera, robot task here, et cetera. So let me show you how to do that. Uh, so now let's uh, add gateways, uh, which are this, the decisions uh, within the process. You see here, payment type is an example. Uh, normally I start with a happy path get that modeled, and then I go back later and, and work on the exception cases. Uh, so the first decision is here, the pay for pizza. Notice if I just click the line, there's a plus sign, I click that and I choose the gateway. And so now I'm gonna rename it to be payment type. I'm just typing it, hit enter. And then I'll change this label to be um, what is this? This is the cash choice. And then the no will be the um, credit. Now it doesn't go to end. It's actually going to go to charge the credit. So I'm going to grab this node and drag it down here to the charge credit. And so I want this one to end. So I'm going to click here and do an end node. And then I can delete this right click the link and delete it and now I like this little neater here so I'm going to put it up here like that so now I need a new uh, check so I'm going to insert a flow and I'm going to drag this onto the um, scan check and now this link doesn't actually go to scan check. I'm going to first check if it's good or bad. So I'm going to insert a decision gateway here and it's going to be called the uh, bad payment. And sometimes I put a question mark at the end of these uh, gateway decisions. Now this end, if it's not a bad payment, then it's going to get routed to void and file check. And this is the wrong place. So I'm going to pull it over here and put it on the link. And this doesn't go here, it's going to go to an end node. And then I can delete this link. Now I'm going to add a uh, boundary event. It's an escalate on the investigate fraud. If the uh, investigator determines that there is fraud, then they will escalate this and insert a flow, which I drag over here to add to blacklist. And this investigate fraud is in the wrong milestone, so I'm going to move it over here. And I'll move this arrow here also to tidy that up a little bit. And now this void doesn't go to the blacklist, so I'm going to select it. And delete that link. And so this link doesn't happen unless it's fraud, so let's delete that link. You see it created an end node, which I'm going to drag over here to this gateway. And then let's clean this up a little bit. Let's drag this up here. And I like this over here on this side better. I like this more down here. A little bit better kind of flow. And I need to label this. Right click, add a label. This is the check choice. So we got cash, credit, check. And then I like this to be a little bit more over here, a little bit more parallel lanes here. And then if I want to match my diagram here, I'm going to move the marketing up to the top swim lane. And then I put customer next. And then I often put system up before the fraud department. And then I'll probably move this down to here. And so that isn't far from what we have here.
You can do it like this, move a little bit cleaner. You can kind of experiment with it, adjust it if you'd like. So now what I'm going to do is do the color coding. And if you see here, you do show color thing. So I'm going to choose this one. Let's name this ODM. I'm going to right click, choose that. Now I'm going to click and hit the shift key, choose multiple and do right click and do orange. Let's change this to be BPM. Let's do this one also, BPM. Now this one and this one are gonna be purple, which matches data cap. And then I'll do this one as RPA, which is yellow. Let's do RPA here. Let's make this one darker blue. And the darker blue label is ICM, IBM Case Manager. And then if you want, you can put these little icons. This is done by a human, so I'll do type human. This is a bot, so I'll do you know, robotic task. This is a human. And then ACH processing, this is a, you know, a web service or something, so I'm gonna do a system task. Charge a credit card, same thing. I'm gonna do a secure connection to a bank, a credit card, Visa, MasterCard, Amex, what have you. And so there you have it, all right? I can zoom out, zoom in, and kind of matches what I did here. And I use this, I'll invite other users in. So my business users, I can socialize this, I can get comments, right? I can publish it. So I end my edit, see comments, docs, changes, I can publish it, all the different details here, uh, and socialize this and get feedback from my users that this is you know, what the, what they want, and this is how the process is going to go. Uh, and then in, I, I hand this off to my developers, and they can, um, they can start building it. They can actually import this into BPM uh, to kind of jumpstart their development. One other thing I like to do is uh, export to PowerPoint. Let me see where that is. Right click, export to PowerPoint. And so now it's creating a PowerPoint. Nice thing with this is then I can go in and in PowerPoint and manipulate the um, the slides. And so here's the PowerPoint and then in here, right? And I just do some plain old power script PowerPoint. And there you have it. All right, thanks for watching.